Hi, my name is Sophia and I'm going to be one of your Swartwood guys. Where are you guys? We're part of the Swartwood family. And are you guys real MCAT DAT students? Yeah. Hey. So that group of students you just saw was one of our summer cycles. And from that group of students, actually a handful of them came from USC. So we figured since they said that some of their friends might be interested, why not go ahead and do something at USC? So the idea is to do a university class review at USC in our traditional style, which is basically reteaching everything from scratch. So hey guys, this is just a quick problem for you guys that are in Chem 105A, okay? So, um, this is my shorthand notation. 20 milliliters of H3PO4 titrated with 0.2 molar NaOH, and it takes you 30 milliliters before you, of NaOH before you hit the equivalence point. Now okay. the question is, what was the concentration of your original HP, H3PO4 solution? Okay, um, so not too bad. So just to remind you, in the actual review, what I would do is, I would do this purely from scratch. But since we don't have a whole lot of time to do this little demo thing, I'll just remind you really quickly, you know C1V1 equals C2V2? This is sort of the magic formula for titrations. But also remember, concentration is what usually? In molarity, it's moles per liter. Volume is in liters. So what you're really getting when you do C1V1 or C2V2 is you're counting the number, you're getting the number of moles, right? So that's when you get that old saying, when you hit the equivalence point, moles of acid equals moles of base. Because one of these guys would be the acid, the other would be the base. And you know that C1V1 just represents the number of moles of one guy, and C2V2 represents the number of moles of the second guy. Okay, so no big deal. There's a little trick here. It won't be quite as simple with this, but it won't be that bad. Um, this setup works really well. assumes that we're working with monoprotic guys, right? Well, monoprotic guys are the acids and, I don't know, monohydroxic, if you want to call that, guys for the bases. So basically 1OH and 1H. So they'll hook up and be nice, right? Okay. So in this case, it's a little bit more complicated because the H3PO4 has three protons to give up, and of course the NMH only has one OH to give up, right? Okay, so let's try this out. So first, let's start with what we know. We know we have 30 milliliters. So let's work on what we know. We know what happens on the base side, right? We know it's concentration, and we know it's volume, so let's put that together, okay? And again, like, I'm going to be sloppy with significant figures. You shouldn't be, though. Okay, so, you know, concentration times volume gives you a number of moles. So, you know, on this side, we have a concentration of 0.2 molar, right? I'm also going to be sloppy with units. And we also have, for the volume, let's put it in liters, 0 0.03 liters. Okay, so, you know, concentration times volume should give you a number of moles. So, in this case, we got 0 0.006, right, moles. Okay, so, no big deal there. So, now we've computed the actual moles of... If we were doing a standard titration where you have a monoprotic acid and just one guy with an OH hooking up, then we could go straight to this. Because we did one side, we just fill out the other. The little twist here, though, is look at the ratios. It takes three of these guys to take out one of these. Do you guys agree? So we have to do a little bit of stoichiometry. Okay, so no big deal. So that means we now have 0 0.006 moles of NaOH, right? But for this reaction to carry out the way it should, right? Every three of these guys will cost you only one of these. Does everybody agree with this? So, there are a lot of different ways to do this and a lot of different tricks. I think in the beginning, unit dimensional analysis is a great thing. You could totally do that. So remember the battle plan. We took what we knew, concentration and volume, we got the number of moles of this. We're going to use stoichiometry to get the number of moles of this. That follows that general pattern. Moles on one side, moles on the other. Once we know the moles of this, then we just divide by the volume to get the concentration. Right? Okay, but we'll do that in a sec. First, agree, we have moles of this, we want moles of this. The cheapest way to do this, it's a 3 to 1 ratio. So it takes 3 of these to give you 1 of these. So if you divide this by 3, this corresponds to 0 0.002. Okay? Um, some people don't like that. So if you don't like that, another cheap way to do it is... But if you want to do it systematically, because some people prefer this, we had 0 0.006 moles of NaOH. What do we want? We want it on top, moles of H3PO4. So this is the systematic way to do it, okay? Just unit dimensional analysis. Okay, in order for this to work out and get only this guy left over, we need to get rid of moles of NaOH. So we need to put moles of NaOH on bottom, right? And we need to find the link up. But we already said that. Three, so let's go back to the original setup. Three of these, let me return these coefficients back to normal. Before I did that little trick. We said it took three of these to line up with one of these. So three NaOH, three NaOH for every one of these, right? For every one of these. 
Literally, we just multiply through, you know the game. These will die, then we'll get 0 0.006 divided by 3, which is 0 0.002 moles of H3PO4. Don't mind that little shortcut I took beforehand. Some people really like that. And in the review, I would talk about the differences. But this is the, <coughs> sorry, this is the generalized procedure for getting the answer. Okay, and it'll always work. This thing down here. Okay. So, now we have our answer there. We're almost done. Once we have this, One zero zero two moles of H3PO4. We're almost done. All we need to do is get the concentration. But you know this. We can even do that formula backwards, but it's fine. You know, concentration is moles per liter, right? So Not a guy is per unit volume. So what we're doing is we're taking the moles. We're going to divide by its volume, which in this case, remember in liters, is 0 0.020. Okay, no big deal. And this should actually be our concentration, right? So moles to moles, liters to liters, looks good. Okay. And in this case, it's just playing with decimals. At this point, we just do a little bit of arithmetic. So we'll move this. We'll 1, 2, 3. So this is 20 on bottom. 1, 2, 3. That's 2 on top. 2 over 20, you know, is 0.1. So I guess the concentration is 0.1 molar. Okay. So not too bad, right? Good luck on your exam. Let us know if you have any questions. And if we get a chance, we'll try to do a Chem 105A review. So let us know. Hi, my name is Stephanie. If you have any questions, just email me. Bye.